Hi boys and girls. Uh, for this week, we're just gonna do a quick little mini lesson about animals that go through a metamorphic change. So we'll focus on the butterfly, which is the most popular one that goes through a metamorphosis. One of my good teacher friends, Miss McLaren, actually got the little um, caterpillars and took caterpillars through the butterfly life cycle. And she has all these great videos. So I thought I'd put it together. Let's get started. We will start looking at the life cycle at the phase of the eggs. The butterfly lays these teeny tiny little eggs. And when I say teeny tiny, I mean barely the size of like the top of a pin. You can see here on this leaf how microscopically small they are. And then they hatch and out come what we call the larva. And they kind of look like creepy little mini worms. And one of the cool kind of details I learned is that they eat their egg for nutrition when they're first born. Next, as you know from The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle, the caterpillar now needs to eat and eat and eat and eat and gain its strength and get nutrition from the leaves that it was born on. So for example, monarch butterflies specifically have to eat milkweed leaves. So if you want to get a lot of monarch butterflies in your garden, you can grow milkweed plants to attract them to come. And then the caterpillars will eat them once they hatch from the egg on the leaves. A monarch butterfly will molt or shed their exoskeleton or skin. So it's properly said they will molt their exoskeleton, but we kind of say it like they shed their skin um, several times. They're just eating and growing and eating and growing and molting. Um, they usually molt about five times over the course of their larva caterpillar phase. And just so you know, they even eat their molted exoskeleton. A couple of really fun facts about caterpillars is that they have 16 legs. Their body is in three sections. There's the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. And um, six of their legs that are attached to the thorax section will actually become the butterfly's real legs later. Another funny thing is that they've got 12 tiny, tiny little eyes that don't see very well at all. They're actually almost as though they're experiencing their world via their 16 little feet and their feet are tasting for them to know that they're, you know, eating the right kind of leaf. As the little caterpillar is walking, do you notice how it's moving its head back and forth? It's actually releasing a silk from its mouth that allows it to create sort of a sticky surface for when it's walking on leaves and branches and upside down. When the caterpillar is ready for its next phase of becoming a pupa, what it does first is it spins a little silk pad to connect to the bottom of a branch or under some leaves, and it has a little hook that kind of hooks into this silk pad. Then it's actually going to shed its exoskeleton skin one last time, revealing the chrysalis that's already there. So the exoskeleton comes off, the chrysalis is there. All these huge changes are happening while they're inside this chrysalis and during this pupa phase until the adult butterfly emerges. butterfly cannot actually eat. It can only drink nectar through a long straw-like tongue called a proboscis. As it flies from flower to flower to get energy from nectar, it's actually helping the pollination process for the plant just like the bees do. I hope you're as sort of in awe of the butterfly life cycle as I am. The idea of them going from this itty bitty egg and growing into these kind of creepy crawly little worm looking things and then into these beautiful caterpillars that we all love and delight in so much they're so cute and beautiful and then 
they shed or molt their exoskeleton and underneath is already their pupa phase, which is the chrysalis. And during that, they go through the metamorphosis where they go from these stubby little worm-like creatures to these gorgeous long-legged beings with these beautiful huge wings. And I mean, they change in so many ways from eating, eating, eating to now only drinking, from crawling to flying. It's just absolutely remarkable to me. It's one of the miracles of nature that just makes your brain go, what? Whenever we're exploring science, it's important to think like a scientist would. And we, for example, last time when we did the animal uh, species and classification, we were thinking like a scientist by putting the different types of animals into categories, sorting them into categories. Today, we were actually looking at the sequence of the phases. That's the way our brains were thinking like a scientist. We were thinking about the order of the life cycle. You might want to consider comparing and contrasting. So when we think like a scientist and we compare and contrast things, we could then present that information in that way. I'll give you an example. So <clears throat> the caterpillar has 16 legs. On the other hand, the butterfly only has six. The caterpillar has 12 eyes and doesn't see very well. However, the butterfly has two eyes and sees excellently. It can actually see more colors in the rainbow spectrum than we can as humans. The caterpillar has a worm-like body walking and crawling on leaves and branches, but the butterfly has a winged body and flies from flower to flower. The caterpillar eats leaves, whereas the butterfly has a long straw-like tongue to drink the nectar from the flowers. The caterpillar's job is to eat and grow and grow and eat. By contrast, the butterfly's job is to drink nectar and lay eggs to reproduce. So do you hear how I was using that contrasting language to compare them, the differences? Now we're gonna compare the similarities. What do they both have in common? So the language is a little different now. Listen to an example of that. The caterpillar and the adult butterfly both are insects with three sections to their body, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Like the caterpillar, the adult butterfly also has an exoskeleton for skin-like armor. Um, just as the caterpillar has antenna, the butterfly has antenna too. Presenting your information on Flipgrid and writing about your information, even if it's an art project style, you can still use this type of language when you're discussing what you've learned as a scientist. For your assignment, I'd like you to use the reading material to learn a little bit more about the details of the butterfly life cycle, and then you can draw it out or do an arts and crafts project to display your learning and send us a little Flipgrid all about it. If you're curious about some of the other ones like ladybugs or frogs, please feel free to do some research about those animals and their metamorphosis and present on that. See you next time.